Good morning, Wittenberg <laughs> Church. <laughs> we are here today to actually do uh, not really what you call church service, but we do something uh, for our turkey supper, which is uh, I think 150, 80, 150, 80 years old, uh, and we just do a little demonstration how prepare food as they prepared it at the time when they started, uh, fresh from scratch. Uh, we have a little cookbook here, which was written about 20 years ago for our church. All the recipes are in this book, which I'm going to demonstrate today. So, if anybody wants to look them up, look at the book. The good book. <laughs> the good book. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to start off a little bit out of the out of the uh, uh, the plan is which we had, because in cooking there's time involved. A lot of people don't realize that time, you see, is the most important part in cooking. And as we today roast the turkey, which we started around 9.30 this morning, uh, because it takes about, uh, uh, if the turkey is be below 12, uh, you know, 12 to 10, 10 to 12 pounds, it takes 50 minutes per pound to roast. Uh, if the turkey is above 12 pounds or more, uh, what's it called, it takes only 10 to 12 minutes to roast. And now don't ask me, I'm not a, a chemist to see, but it's a, it's a policy of them. Uh, uh, you have a, a little uh, handout there, uh, which we have here, which is in the book also. So it's right there, and Debbie's going to give it out already. But it's in the book now, if you want to look now, it tells you exactly, uh, not only for a turkey, but for example, here's an 8 to 10 pounds. It says actually 20 minutes. Uh, the turkey for 18, 18, 20 pounds above. He said 14 minutes, so it's a part to give you an idea how to do that. We have a 12 pound turkey, which we start at 9.30, so it was likely to be ready around 12.30 or so. Uh, the important part is when you roast anything, especially turkey, that every half an hour you baste it. Basting means to see that you moisturize the skin by taking the juices with a spoon from the bottom or with a baster uh, and then just moisten the skin so it doesn't dry out and stays nice and moist as he starts to crisp and cook all the way through. Uh, turkey is important also uh, that you measure it uh, not only by time, is it, but also by thermometer. Uh, the internal temperature for the leg should be 165. The internal temperature for the breast should be 180. And again, it's in the handouts which I gave you. It's written down and if we have a book upstairs and the mouth X, so if anybody wants to look at that, uh, all these, uh, what's he called, things are right in there for people to refresh themselves as it goes with the turkey. Uh, once the turkey is ready, and later on we're going to show it to everybody, uh, you take the turkey out and you rest it for about 20 to 30 minutes. That means that the juices which are pushed out, because in cooking is the heat goes in and then the heat comes out, and as the heat comes out, he moves the juices from the center to the outside so the turkey is nice and moist so the, the resting is way forward and then we're going to make the gravy. We're going to show what's it called a very simple way as, as the old, the old, uh, what's it called, little burgers did it about 158 years ago. It's a very simple process. Uh, as this is cooking and the thing we're going to start off with doing our green onions. Because it takes some time to say while the turkey is roasting I want to do a demonstration of how to prepare the turkey. The onions were cooking out so everything comes out at the same time for us to taste. Okay, so. And Nancy was kind enough to make some stuffing uh, and you may want to talk about it later on and see what you did on that so everybody can understand and we want to show it also uh, what we did for the people to see the stuffing. Uh, the reason why we suggest not to stuff the turkey, uh, that's a sanitation thing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if we put stuffing in there, it takes too long for the heat to come to the center, mm -hmm. and sometimes it starts to sour. Mm -hmm. I mean, because sour in this case, that becomes salmonella, and it becomes, in this case, uh, dangerous to eat. Uh, in the old days, they never stuffed the cavity; they only stuffed uh, by the neck, because it's a little thing in all this. Because, but people that stuff in the cavity, it takes too long for the heat to reach the center. So, stuffing should not be put in the center. If you want to, for your private use at home, you can stuff the front part with the neck is, uh, what's it called, but that's about it when it comes to that. But then you have to thrust the turkey 
and it's an extra type of a learning how to do that is here an extra work as it goes along with that. So what we did here actually we're gonna make the pearl onions and some people actually take whole onions and slice them but that's not really cream onions. So it's called uh, in the old days when they used they used the pearl onion. Uh, you can get them easily at Adams, uh, sometimes in the uh, tops at, at uh, other supermarkets, but Adams has them, uh, what's you call it, at all the time. They come as here, like this here, with the peel on it. You can also buy them unpeeled. They're a little more expensive, uh, and you can find them as here uh, in Adams also, but they also have them in the freezer. And the whole thing is here, so they are, if you don't want to go for the peeling process, that's a part of it. But peeling is actually very simple. Now Debbie this morning was crying all morning because <laughs> she was here, what's it called, peeling all these onions. And she did it, what's it called, the old ways. By hand, what's it called, each onion she peeled off. You know, uh, and I said to you, you know, you're nuts, why, why do you do that? You see, it's, it's a much easier way to do that. So, the basic policy of doing onion, and Debbie, if you would, please, think if the water is boiling over there, we have some boiling water on, on the stove, salt water. Keep it salt water. And she's going to throw them in there for about a minute and a half. Uh, and uh, what's it called? Uh, give me one. Give me one here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she put them in there for about a minute and a half. Uh, when a minute and a half is off, she's going to take them out. And at home, you can put them in, in, in ice, in an ice bath. And they, they uh, stop immediately cooking. It's called the shock it. Uh, what's it called? And then you actually just have to touch and they peel by themselves. Mm. Otherwise you would have to go right now, with this you would have to go this way, and then you have to take the skin off. And it takes a long time. Uh, and, uh, and these skins that don't come off is easy. And you don't want to have skin on the onion, because later on you see if somebody gets that skin in the mouth, that was he goes destroys the entire taste mm -hmm. sensation with the thing. So in this case we'll take off. You see I still have I still have peel right here. Now I have to go again over, over this. And again important is if you do it this way, uh, give it to somebody which you don't like. The whole thing you see is uh, <laughs> uh, or put them in the refrigerator. Can you have a minute and a half? Okay. Not well enough. Sorry. Fussy <laughs> uh, chefs. <laughs> uh, put him in the refrigerator because when it's cold, the uh, the fumes stay inside. If it's warm, the fumes come up. The whole thing. So that's why it's important to have them. Uh, they, they really don't rise as much. Or you need a gas mask. Uh, and a gas mask, of course. Hang on. Let me take a gas mask as it goes with it. <laughs> you put it right in here. Uh, so the peeling part is process as it goes with it. The next thing is here after the peeling, she's going to bring them over in about uh, a minute or so. Is uh, uh, and uh, I, I put them under the cold water, dear. Yes, sir. Don't they, they want to burn my little fingers here? The whole thing. You know, I'm just a very humble immigrant. You know, the whole thing you see is I'm so humble sometimes I can't believe it. The whole thing is he goes with that. You see, uh, uh, no, it's my middle name, H. Humble. And handsome. Oh well, of course. Is, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, so while we do this one here, the, the next thing actually after that, uh, which is going to be, we start off showing how to dress the things. Here. But we do this in a minute. We have here not a turkey because it's very difficult to get small turkeys. I had to go to Adams and I had to go to about three supermarkets before <laughs> they got a 12 pound. They have about only. 22 to 27 pounders, uh, and uh, I would have had to roast that because that size to take about four to five hours to roast at about 325 to 350 is uh, uh, if you do it at 350, I'm going to show you in a minute. It's good to see you put a dome above a dome, see, which means an aluminum foil dome, so the the skin is not going to uh, get too brown and the, the turkey is still raw. Right? So uh, that, that's about for smaller turkeys, you don't have to worry so much, but for big ones, it takes that type of thing. Yes, okay, uh, Chef, are you ready? I'm ready. Yes, uh, bring it right over, and then we pour that water out there away, okay? Yes, dear. Now, here we have the onions. 
So all we have to do now is, is take the thing off, and it, it, it comes right off. Yeah. So all you take now, you can do this also beforehand, and you don't have to do it afterwards, but it comes right off. So it's a very simple process of the thing here. It's about a minute and a half in boiling salt water. And then you can just, you actually can just slide them off here. And you can do it in a very fast moment. I mean, I personally like to use the, the uh, onions with the peel on. They're not dried out. Sometimes when you buy them uh, in, a, in, a, in a soup market like this here, they're there for about uh, two, three weeks like this. And they're a little dry in the center there, I mean, they don't taste this good, see, but here you have... You can see it's very fast. Very simple. And uh, then we wouldn't have to have it dry if we would have done it this way. But she refused. Because now... And here it is. So we'll be done. What about the frozen ones? The frozen, you just take them as, as they are in a frozen state and put them frozen in the cold water, mm -hmm. bring them to a boil, uh, and simmer them for about 10 minutes. Okay, uh, now they're ready here, and now what we have on, on the fire, uh, we got, can I get the pot for me? So I have about two pounds here. I was just going to ask it's about that. It's about two the pounds, okay? The whole thing is, is uh, but it doesn't matter. So bring them with you. If you have uh, five pounds or ten pounds, just take a bigger pot, you put it in a, in a, in a thing, put a little salt in there. Uh, the kosher salt is the best because it has no adjectives. Okay. And now, Deborah, if you just take that and just basically cover it just barely with cold water and put it on the fire to boil, okay? Yeah. Uh, when it comes up, isn't she, isn't she nasty? She's <laughs> wonderful. Oh my God, my <laughs> wife and I was Attack me. Did you get that? I was attacked by my wife. <laughs> it is. But anyway, I would say, well, strike that. Uh, but what you put now is you put cold water just barely above on the fire. The moment it comes to a boil, 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, what we do basically is very simple, is we make the sauce. Now you can use only flour, as the recipe calls for, but I found out if you take half flour, half cornstarch, you get no lumpy. Okay, the whole thing is this. So what I have here is we pre mixed the flour and cornstarch. Okay, and so we take that, is uh, depending what we have, uh, I think for about a, a pint of liquid, you want to take uh, a, a tablespoon of of, uh, of uh, the uh, the mixture. Okay, so we just take a tablespoon of the mixture. Two, three, four. Okay. Now, what do you want actually? Basically, this is a base. You want to have it later on maple syrup thick. If it's too watery, you add some more to it. If it's too thick, you add some more liquid to that. Mm -hmm. But the maple syrup thick, that's the important part because later on, as even you mix it with the others, they're stables you could even write them. They're not, they're not as, uh, as gluey. Mm -hmm. They're more like soupy, though, means what people like to have, it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, and now what we do here is, you can take half and half. You can just take milk, I got it. You can just take milk, you see, and we just take that and make, uh, what's it called? A mixture, smooth mixture. So we're just going to add a little bit more to that. And see, because of this cornstarch, it doesn't lump. You can see that. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to have it smooth and all this with the milk. You can always add more milk to that. Uh, what's it called? Or you can just take half and half. What I do is I use milk and heavy cream. Is uh, the heavy cream is it gives the smoothness right to the so I add a little bit of heavy cream to that. 
So it's very smooth, as you can see right here, mm -hmm. is, let's just set this aside. This is the base. Now, the recipe which I gave you says to take some butter uh, and uh, make a roux, actually. Mm -hmm. The butter there, the flour, the whole thing is no problem. You can do it like this, but to me, it's extra work. Because now you have to watch it, you have to stand right behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I found out the easy way is just, uh, what's it called? Put the onions in the salt water, just what's it called, uh, uh, basically cover them. 20 minutes later, you add this one to that, bring it to a boil about five minutes, okay. adjust the seasoning as well. You don't have to drain it? What's that? You don't have to drain it? Like no, 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 nothing. Yeah, add this to it. Nothing, because you have to, I think you see, it's like, it's like a, it melts right in there, and I think it becomes nice and creamy. So you don't have to do anything. Now, my seasonings are a little pepper and some nutmeg. Nutmeg is optional, you can use also mace, uh, but nutmeg is it's an old fashioned type of thing. But be careful, the nutmeg is very, very strong. So you want to have just a tiny touch of nutmeg. Excuse me, just a tiny touch. Just pass it around and just a little sniff, so you can see how, how strong that is. I add a little bit of pepper to that. Now, never ever put any pepper or anything out of, out of the container. Because what happens to you, you get too heavy, put it in your hand first. Now your hand is very important. Two fingers like this is just a pinch, a knife tip full. Three fingers is a third of a teaspoon. The hand evenly full is a, ta a teaspoon and heaped is a tablespoon. So again, it's in this case, I want to just put a little bit in there. So I put it in my, in my, my things. I would just want to have a half a teaspoon, and you can see that I have it right, right, right here in my hand. Okay. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Now I can also use the spoons, but you never find them when you need them. <laughs> the whole thing is here. Let's just add it to that. And now, if you look here, I just had it standing for a while. It got thick already. Can you see that? It got, it got, it got thick already. So in this case, I have to add a little bit more either cream to that or water, or what's it called, more milk, so I think it's here. Mm -hmm. And that's how you, it's the cornstarch and the flour together, the gluten in there, what's it called, starts to thicken up now. Mm -hmm. So normally I don't do it as early like I do now here, to show it, I just do it when the thing is ready, right. and then I pour it right inside, see you said. So in this case, I'm gonna add a little more cream to that, and it's gonna start thickening again in a minute, so we put it right over here. So this is ready for that, see it. Now, let's put this over here so we can see what we're doing. Are there any questions up so far? Can you move the spoons? I can do anything. Yeah. So, yeah. so doing this method, you don't need to use the butter at all. What's it? Using your me this method, we don't need butter at all. You don't have to, but if you want to, in the end, you can mix uh, maybe a little bit of butter in there for in flavor. At the end. In the end, okay. okay. If you want to, but you don't have you to. Have to. Just okay. saying. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, the butter is very often it's the flavor. You can also use some olive oil if you want to, it doesn't have to be butter. Right. Uh, sometimes you do that to make it more smooth. Mm -hmm. so I think that's, right. And add flavor to that, that's the whole thing. It's not the butter so much, see. The residue is in the butter, which is the flavor. Because if we, uh, if we uh, take the butter and clarify it, it's like oil. Mm -hmm. Because there's no more flavor in it, it's just the fat. Mm -hmm. But it's here, see, the milk solids in the butter, which really add that flavor to that. Which later on, is he gives it ever more. Mm -hmm. That's the key word. Now, before we go on the chicken, I want to just check the turkey. Uh, and we have the turkey in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me just close this up here. Oh, by the way, when you have, uh, what's it called, nutmeg, paprika, or this, keep them in the freezer. Really? Because okay. they evaporate. See, uh, it's called, if you leave the refrigerator outside, in about uh, a month from now, it's a name outside, but all the aroma is gone. Wow. So keep them in the freezer all the time. You see, this way, you can keep them there for 10 years if you want to. Wow. And, uh, so at any time, like a paprika, uh, mace, you know, yeah. anything which is powdered, mm -hmm. keep it in the freezer. Or curry, mm -hmm. whatever this case, yeah, for people. Okay. Little, little type of thing. Okay. Now, over here we have our oven. And can we open up for a second? At home we'd have, we'd have a few of them here. 
Now we have here our turkey. And we're gonna paste it. Now I'm gonna bring the camera over here, maybe can you see it? If you look at the turkey right now, you can see it's very dry on top here. So the basting actually does, you take the juices and you just put them right here. Okay, if this is done, you can see it's a bit on the brown side. I'm going to put a dome on top. This way, as you told, it doesn't brown anymore. Very loosely, so the heat goes right into it. Uh, and then you put it back in the fire. And about every half hour, you should baste it. Careful, please don't hurt yourself. Maintain what you call your, your temperature anytime you open up the oven door. You're going to lose some heat. Uh, and uh, it takes a while to come back again. So uh, the, the less you keep uh, actually that the oven will open, the best it is okay. Now, what is we're working with the air. The onions are boiling for you? They are boiling and you have 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes, fantastic. Let's go. Now while we do this one, let's do some pre prep. Yeah. Is, uh, here I have I washed it before, uh, and this is actually this is the juices which came out, which we don't want. Mm -hmm. So that's why you wash it before, what's it called, uh, and then we disregard, you see, because they're basically nothing as you what you call uh, dirt. You want me to take it? Mm -hmm. No, I need wash that. It. You want to wash it, yeah? Let me wash it. Oh, you're it. so good. <laughs> Isn't she great? She so, is. Best thing ever. I know. That she married me. <laughs> you know. Now, Basically what you have to watch out here is inside here, see there's still water. This is the water actually which comes out of the thing. See what you have to do now is to dry it. Uh, because uh, especially what happens to chickens or the turkeys which you buy today, they inject water. Because they take the blood out and they by law they allow to see put 10% uh, as much water in there as there was blood in there before. So it was equal, that's, that's a big thing, you see, because that's a loss for them. You take the, that's poundage, what's yeah. equal. So they add, they inject water, but what happens is, it makes it very, very watery. You know, yeah. Because they put them in a, in a plastic, and that's why you see in the plastic always, all this, 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 this the juicy water there, which came from out, and the, and the thing out here, see, let me just take this one here, and take this one over here, and bring it over here. <laughs> You can see you still have the juices right there. Now we, we just dry it out, inside and outside. This is very important that we really dry it because if you put the turkey moist like this into the oven, it starts to steam. And when it starts to steam, the skin doesn't get crisp. So they don't only have that rubbery crisp, though, which is like chewing gum when it comes to that. So the dry it is because when you need to dry, it's like baking. If you put baking or cake in a moist in a moist environment, mm -hmm. you have a problem. And and, and, and and roasting is the same as baking, as you need dry heat. Mm -hmm. You know, the drier the heat, the better. That's why sometimes convection oven is very good to see because it go it, it dries it up now as it starts to roast the okay. cake. Why you can see normal ovens don't have that, the moisture sticks sticks with it and it gets sometimes not as crisp as we're supposed to be. Just put yeah, you can take this when you do. Switch. Thank you. So now it dried up very nicely on all sides. And I take paper towels, it's the best thing. A lot of people don't do that, you see, but that's a part of the washing. Now the next thing is, Take the fat out. That's uh, this. And our turkey has some fat also in the back. Mm -hmm. You can take it out. You can take this later on uh, and actually cut it up. 
and add it in the pan with it because this is pure fat actually which later on for the sauce gives the extra flavor to that. Uh, we also have here the gizzards and it's very important some people say throw it away but no there's flavor that you add to that so what, what I do very often I'll just take that and, and add it also to the roasting pan and later on I make the sauce and all this gives extra flavor and then I take it out of the sauce or sometimes you can uh, dice it up or grind it and add it back in again so there's the chiplets which go in in the sauce additional flavor and this what in the old days they used everything I mean they put everything in the in the thing and that's how they it's what like today where you open the can or something you know they did it all from scratch so we have this right here uh, next thing, next part is here is you take that and you take your rings and you just twist them under, underneath. Just like, like, like this. Sabotage. So it's just, you know, it's just like them. So, so they, they stay on, underneath. Just like this. This allows the chicken to, to, to stand straight. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they just put it like this on the side. Uh, what's it called? Uh, and it can also like this too, especially when you have a, a, a roaster which has high, uh, high what's it called, um, walls on the side now, then they hold it together. That's the best way to do it. Now the next thing you see is there's a couple of things you can do it. You think, but the, the easiest way is to take, excuse me, take a knife and just cut a small hole right in this flap there in the back here. Just like this. Now we take this one and you just stick it in there. <laughs> Sabotage. I used to work for the CIA, you know, and uh, the KGB has not found out yet as he called it, that, that was a school. <laughs> so you do that, just cut a hole in there. You can see the hole? And then you just take the drumstick and stick it right in that hole. Perfect. Okay. Now see, it starts, as it starts roasting, it pulls it in like this. Mm -hmm. And then later when you carve it, you have a nice breast here which you can take out. Or you can take a string actually, or a wire and tie it. And sometimes when you get the turkey, they have a plastic in the back mm -hmm. there already. So just leave that there uh, and then you don't have to do that. But that's, that's a part of it. So now at that time, okay, you, see, you can see it's still very moist. I'm going to try it. Normally what I do here, I just take it out and put it in a pan and let it sit in room temperature for about a half hour, uh, what's it called, to dry. The whole thing is easy. But now, pretend that this one is the roasting pan. The whole thing is easy. It's just placed it in the roasting pan. And now it comes to seasoning. Now we have some salt here. We have some pepper here. Uh, we have a little sugar here. Uh, now I use the uh, what's it called, the uh, uh, what's it called, sobicha, the whole thing, whatever you call it, the, uh, because I'm a diabetic, so uh, but you can use zero sugar or you can use candied sugar and everything you want to. Uh, sugar is good for color. So later you want to have see, a, a, a nice brown roasting color. You can use paprika, but paprika becomes bitter. When it starts roasting, okay, it may look nice, proud to see, but it becomes bitter, and later on, uh, it can could aff affect what you call the taste. Mm -hmm. The sugar is the most powerful drug, actually, because we can all go for sugar. You can be up here full of food, mm -hmm. and you still have space for like, for some some dessert with the sugar in it. I think it is. So sugar is very really powerful, uh, and, and that turns the taste sensation on. Mm -hmm. We crave for sugar. We crave for salt too. Mm -hmm. So not too much, you just take a little bit. So normally what I do, I just mix the salt, the pepper, and the sugar together. Mm. And then I just season my, my thing. And I bring it back out again for a sec, because I made a mistake here. Yep. Is a, now I take a little sugar, just like a little pinch, high up, so it's easily, as it, it doesn't hit just one spot. But if you come down here, you just get little spots. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have you want to have it up so it's easily uh, moves all over the place. Just a tiny pinch. You don't want to have too much because you don't want to have that, that flavor for it. Mm -hmm. you know, see now you do the same thing next thing with the salt. Take the salt. 
Same thing. You see, because we go like this, you get, again, these little spots still over here. Now we do a little salt inside. Now, you say why inside? Because you want to have the flavor, but the juices when they're, they're seasoned, because they've been absorbed later on back in the meat, and so you get some of the flavoring inside the meat, rather than just having the outside. Though, so you just put a little, a little salt in there, you turn it upside down, do the same thing on the other side. So a little bit of sugar, that's the bottom side, set, that's a tiny thing, you put the salt again, now some side you should massage it in, you can do that too, but you really don't have to, because uh, the salt in it, and then we put the pepper on, now you can use white pepper, black pepper, uh, green pepper, uh, you know, it's up to the individual, pepper is pepper. Uh, the only difference is that the white pepper is the more more sharp one, cayenne pepper is very, very, very hot, uh, what's it called, the black pepper is the more mild one, uh, what's it called, and the green pepper, of course, has a raw flavor, because it's the same peppercorn. The green flavor is when it's unripe, you mm -hmm. take it off the wine when it's on the screen, has a raw type of flavor. Uh, what's it called, when it they take the green pepper and dry it in the sun, it turns black and ripply, it becomes the black pepper. Yes. And if they ripen it on the wine, it becomes the white pepper because it's, it's the stone inside which they use. So it's the same thing, but each one has a different type of flavor. So white pepper is more, less use, uh, black pepper, a little more use as it goes. So we do the same thing again, we just put a little bit in your, in your hand. And again, it's up to individuals. Some like more pepper, some less pepper. I mean, for the turkey supper, it will go less mm -hmm. because there's, you want to be neutral because people have a stone on it. Uh, because people always can put it all themselves back on again. Mm -hmm. And we do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> now we take that. And if you want to put a stuffing in, uh, you can put the stuffing here but not in the cavity, okay? You could put in the cavity some carrots, some celery, and some onions for extra flavor, which you later on can put in, in, in cooking the sauce to get extra flavor to that. And what you could do then is see, which most kitchens have the little submersible blenders. Mm -hmm. You can take that, and when it's cooked, with a submersible blender, just puree it, mm -hmm. when you have extra flavor, and you don't need any flour or anything to thicken up because the vegetables thicken the sauce by itself. But when we're cooking a big turkeys for the turkey supper, we probably really don't want to put anything in there. No, no, for the turkey supper, I wouldn't put any stuff in there. I just mentioned that if you make your own right. turkey. With turkey supper, you want to just give the... Because the problem is the people have to take it apart. Yeah. It's a messy job yeah. to get the... the, 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 uh, <laughs> the uh, to get the, the stuff out, to see is... Uh, so, make the, the stuffing on the side. So now, at that time, you would take some oil or some pan, is sprayed nicely in and outside. So the outside and inside. Then put it in the roasting pan. Let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes in dry air. What happens now is the salt starts to pull moisture out. This is protein. With the moisture comes protein. So in the roasting process later on, you get a better caramelization uh, on the whole thing, you see, because it's the moisture and it keeps it more on the moist side, you see, is, uh, uh, it's actually with all, with all type of meat, you should always season it, let it sit for about, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, for uh, a 20, 25 pound turkey, about 30 minutes. Uh, if it's just a smaller place like this, you maybe 10 minutes. But you can see it, it starts to, the moisture, you can even see it now, the moisture starts to come out already as it goes. And with the moisture comes protein, and then of course you have all these parts, which you put right in the in the pan as it goes all, also with it. So it's a very simple process actually of, of doing that. So it's covered up. So that's what I do at home. I just cover it up there so that the little uh, animals which zoom around don't go. That's the first thing that go on there. No one wants yeah. them. I, I, 
I said a very fascinating story. I, I was in India once, uh, and uh, the Indians are famous for the raisin cake. And my friend Tony, we went on the way to Accra, which is a big uh, temple up there, beautiful place to think. And we stopped at a side place, and, and he says to me, Chris, I have to, there's a raisin cake over there. I have to have that raisin cake. And I said, I don't think so. He walked over there, and the raisins flew away. <laughs> the entire cake was covered with flies to the see, so. so you know, so you have to watch out once in a while. As he goes, of course, nevertheless, we never had the raisin cake. As he goes, we did. How are we doing, dear? So you want me to take the onions out from the other yes, part? Yes, uh, bring the onions and put them in the other part, okay? Uh, take the uh, the big one there to take it out. What? No, this is fine. It takes too long to you. The onions are done. Okay. Ah, perfect. The onions are done. Let's see. Isn't she great? Isn't she great? <laughs> okay. Any questions of support? Now, look at this one here. See? I think they've got. I mean, uh, I, I, normally I don't do this beforehand because I have to add more liquid to it now because it's tough to, to mm -hmm. put it in a thing like this. See? So, but I just want to show you how how powerful it is actually over here. This over here now. This over here. Any questions from the, from the audience here? You can ask me anything. I have no money. <laughs> My wife has all the money. <laughs> I have no, the I have. Yeah, bring them over to you. I have no diseases. <laughs> okay, now. Michelle, so, onions, show? so the onions have been drained. Yeah, well, actually, you don't have to drain them, but we did it like this. Now I need the, the moisture. Yeah, why would you like it in? Uh, just bring me the whole pot. Put the camera on her. Oh, I have right here. Yeah. So they're, they're actually cooked here now. Yeah. Uh, just put it over here, dude. There's a little bit of more. Okay. Here. Now, the thing is here is. Can I taste the onion? You probably see, I sometimes want to taste because I put salt in there. Okay. You can smell salt. No, we're not going to use it. No. Not too salty? No. Pull it out and just give me some hot water. Hot water? Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. It was a little too salty. I had a little heavy hand. <laughs> yes, you know, we saw. You know what they say that something is too salty? <laughs> the chef is in love. Oh, oh. I'm not in love. <laughs> heavy love. That's why it was very salty. <laughs> all you see is, uh, well, it's all these sayings which you have you now. You know, you go on the ladder and all, you put the salt on the shoulder and all the things you see. Those little things now which you picked up in the old days. Yeah. You know, you see a black cat in front of you, what's it called? Yeah. You sneeze three times, so you make a million dollars. Huh. Yes, okay, thanks. Thank you very much. What we want to have actually is enough water there to cover what we had before. Okay, dear, thank you. Now normally I do this over the range, okay? Uh, in this case, uh, and I need a wooden spoon over there, please. So now I'm going to use a little more milk because I don't want to have too much heavy cream in there. Mm. It's, it's too, uh, too, too too fatty. So put a little more milk to that. Thank you. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> Come in the picture, dear. Hey, did you, are you going to add these to them? No, because they're mine. So I want to have it so I can pour it in. Now I take that and just pour it right like this in there. And it dissolves immediately, as you can see. See, it dissolves immediately. So now we put it back in the fire, here, stir it a little bit, let it come to boil, and then we can see how thick it is. If it's not thick enough, we add more to that. Uh, if it's too thick, we add some more milk in this case to the whole thing. So, so again here is, with anything you see, it's a feel. 
That's what cooking is all about, it's a feel, and all sauces should be maple syrup thick. That's the key word. Uh, because you know what maple syrup is? Mm -hmm. You put it on your pancake and it goes click, 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 and then it stops. And that's the sauce. If it's thicker like this, it's not a sauce anymore, or a gravy, then it's a, it's, it's, it's a pudding. Mm -hmm. you know, and people don't like it. If it's too thick and now like a paste, mm -hmm. again, it turns you off the whole thing. But if the sauce, which is just the maple syrup, mm -hmm. runs nicely, then you can mix it with the mashed potatoes, all the other stuff now, and sometimes even sip it. That's a that's a part of it. You see, that's the basic part of, of the of the onions. So I think you see is uh, uh, so. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, anybody has another question? No. Wait a minute.